the structure of reality. Our consciousness works diligently to create a model of the world in which the human can live in and rely on. Human beings, we function automatically to distort all of the sensory information provided to us by the world so that we can convert this chaotic everything into a hyperstable something that can be described and predicted. And that is mainly done unconsciously in the invisible. And we have this ability to do this so we know how it is. We must always know how it is, how it's going to be. It is so, so important for the unconscious to know what to expect and that it can survive from it. The challenge is, is however the unconscious has, has learned to survive, it just replicates that. And so if you're born in a family uh, full of scarcity or hard work, or if you have an experience of feeling rejected uh, or not good enough or that there's something wrong with you, your unconscious learns that that's actually how the world is and that's actually survivable. And it continually finds the same thing over and over and over again. And how it does it is it brings in information from, you know, the five senses and more. But, but you know, we get it. Information comes in, you know, sight, sound, uh, touch, smell, taste, and, and everything else. We, we bring in this information. Now, there's a lot of information, and we need to convert that so we know how it is. So instead of seeing the person we're sat down for coffee with as who they are, we create an image in our mind of how other people like them have been. If we sit down for a sales meeting, we're not sitting down in this sales meeting. We're bringing all the information from previous sales meetings to figure out how this one should be. So what we do is we first distort, we second generalize, we third delete. And we do this by, by changing the information to make it make sense to us so that we know how it's going to be. See, we, we know that if, if a, a sale, if we're sitting there for a sale, if we know that what we must do to get the sale is manipulate the other person, well, now we know how it is. See, now we know how it is. If we know there's such a thing as rejection and we're aware of it, we don't want that to happen. So we know what we must do. So we've created a reality, whereas that might not be the reality at all. In fact, a lot of people get it wrong. So, so what happens is as we bring this outside reality in, we use a whole heap of different ways to create this internal representation. You see, two people can be sat in the exact same room, you know, and, and one could be really irritated because of the sound of the air conditioning. Another person could be just sitting there completely present, be so happy that they're sitting inside and it's cool while, or, while it's uh, really hot outside or it's warm. They could just be happy about it, but it's this exact same experience. And, and that just comes down to how someone has conditioning on the inside. See, one person might be a, an air conditioning uh, installer or maintenance person, so it just irritates them that there's a sound. They think, oh, that can be fixed. But see, it's the same reality. The only reason that they're doing it different or experiencing it different is based on their beliefs. So we distort, generalize, we delete, we do it through our values and our belief systems, through our attitudes, through decisions, through our past, through our traits, through our memories, through our language patterns. This is how we do it. And we create an internal representation of how it is. And then we live through that internal representation. And what's interesting is I was driving a, a Tesla the other day and they do this. So what they do is they have cameras going out there onto the road and, and around and they are filming what's going on right around the whole car. They're creating a model of the world uh, on the dash and then the car is driving on that model of the world that's created. You see, so, so it's not actually in the world. The cameras are bringing in the information and then it's driving on this. From that internal representation, we end up creating a state of being uh, or, or knowing and we go, this is how it is. So if we have a belief that someone's going to reject us or this can happen, we, uh, we distort and generalize, we make that true, we get a state and this state leads us to a behavior. It leads us to a certain way of thinking, a certain way of avoidance or distraction. And so we, we're always taking the truth, which is reality out there, distorting it, generalizing, deleting information to make it a stable something. And this stable something is not reality. This gets people so caught up because then they see how it is and they go, you know what? I don't like how I keep creating it. So they get the assumption that they must fix it. They think, well, I must fix myself or do something wrong. But the key is actually innocence. 
The key to get out of this mess isn't to fix it or try to heal it or try. The key is actually to go and remember a time before you learnt it all, before you learnt how the world is, and, and return to that place of peace or presence or innocence. That's the key to get out of your structure of reality. 